G'day guys, welcome to my Rx Wise Future video. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about NRL's Round 1 predictions for 2024. Guys, let's get started. Now, going into Round 1, bring it back. Las Vegas, baby. The opening, the grand opening of two games in this game, uh, we see the Manly Seagulls going up against the Rabbitohs. Now, this game's going to be real tough and real hard. Um, I expect to be, I expect to see uh, Manly uh, probably like getting the job done, but I could see, um, I could see the Rabbitohs fighting uh, in this game, but it's mainly like how uh, the way that uh, Manly can put in a good effort. I've seen them train, I've seen them play pretty good like in their upcoming videos. Um, I've heard that they've actually improved and like, pretty good like with uh, Brooks, uh, Javoyevich, Saab, Kola um, in there and like who else like you know, yeah but anyway um, in this match what I do see about this game um, is mainly home game but it's obviously in Las Vegas, so it's different, something different, something good, um, Las Vegas. So, never know, uh, first time they're playing in Las Vegas, so it's probably going to be different. It's probably going to be like, as um, the grass is going to be like pretty good um, in the surface, it's going to be quite like uh, different, like with the grass and how the way the fielding is, because uh, usually the NFL do play in that. Uh, type of games like in that type of grounds uh, itself, but yeah, the NRL will hopefully be a very good uh, game as what you're saying. But yeah, I do apologize if I am putting this out late. I did have some other uh, things that I had to do, um, yeah, so I do apologize if I'm putting this out late. But anyway, I am going to go with the Rabbitohs by six points in this game to defeat the Manly Seagulls in this match. The next game of this match um, in Las Vegas again, so there's double headers. We see the Roosters going up against the Broncos. Now this game's going to be real tough and hard. Um, I do expect to see uh, the Roosters play um, a very good uh, game, but no Dominic Young, which that is a big blow. So you see Joseph Sawali in that number five side for the team. But then again, um, with the Broncos, um, they are a really good team. They are hard to defeat. And the Roosters sometimes they can have a good game. Basically, they're on cold team, so you may think that they come out with like a good energy and pride to the team. But yeah, in Las Vegas, you expect to see um, things will be as different. But yeah, it's a matter of um, how it goes for uh, the game anyway. So Broncos. Um, I do reckon that this game will be a very um, ordinary one, but with Reese Walsh in that side also for the team, you still got um, Dean uh, Marina or something like that, but Jesse Arthurs um, in that side uh, for the team also too, um, which sees uh, Adam Reynolds in that number seven um, side for the team also too, and then you've got uh, Israel Mam in that side for the team. But it's a matter of uh, Salman Cobo also too, if he's going to play um, a very uh, big game against the Roosters in this side, so you never know. Rooster, Roosters can come out firing, but they probably won't, so I do see this game being a very ordinary one, but I'm going to go with uh, the Broncos, unfortunately, because there's no Dominic Young, and there's a massive big blow to the side for the team also too, so... In this one, I'm going to go with the Broncos by 12 points in this game. The next game of this match, we see the Warriors going up against the Sharks. Now, this game is going to be another tough and hard game. Um, but the Warriors are a pretty good team, as um, what you recall. But the Sharks have been going as well pretty good. Uh, but I just think that how the way that this team can pan out um, will be a pretty much tight game. Um, 
but the Warriors, like basically with Sean Johnson in the side, I don't see Tamari Martin in that side, um, but we still see Chance Nickel Kortstad in that side for the team. But then again, um, Marcelo Montoya played a really good game uh, last uh, week with the trial match. Um, also, um, yeah, Sean Johnson did play well, and so did uh, Chance and Nicol Klockstad. He played pretty good. Um, but yeah, it's just, the Sharks are a pretty ordinary team. They're an hollow cold side. They're a team that can't really win as much games as they can. But with Nico Hines in that side, he can boost uh, the Sharks pretty much uh, sometimes. But which I do see this game going into a tough battle for the Warriors. I just think that the Warriors can improve really well um, in this side for the team. But when the Warriors can be on their feet at home, they can improve really well. And what I do see the Sharks can do is Nico Hines can improve, but it's a matter of do or die clash, but yeah, it's just a matter of how they can play. And yeah, so I'm gonna go with the Warriors by six points in this side of the feet and the Sharks in this game. Next game of this match, we see the Knights going up against the Raiders. Now, this game's going to be really um, tough and hard, but like for the Knights, um, unfortunately, yeah, Dominique Young has transferred to the Sydney Roosters. So, without him, unfortunately, the Newcastle Knights aren't a good team because he does score many odd tries um, in each game. So, yeah, it'll be tough and hard, but you never know. But anyway, um, move on from there. It's a fresh start for the Newcastle Knights without him. So obviously uh, you would see uh, Greg Marshu and um, Tom Jenkins in the side uh, for the team. Because of that um, yeah you would see it um, but it's a matter of tough and hardness uh, for the Knights. Like basically from Tom Jenkins um, going to the Newcastle Knights from the Penrith Panthers, uh, which Tom Jenkins haven't, hasn't really played much of first grade side. He's been playing with reserve grade for the New South Wales Cup. So um, it's a matter of do or die clash um, in this game. So the Raiders are with their, where basically the Raiders are out uh, with no Jack Wyden in their side. So, uh, yeah, fortunately, it's going to be a very uh, tough game. But apparently, yeah, Jack Wyden has gone with the South Sydney Rabbitohs. South Sydney Rabbitohs. Um, yeah, so it's just a matter of do or die clash. Um, yeah, basically, the Raiders, I don't see them going off in a real uh, good uh, game. Um, only because that they, I reckon, they'll sit, fall apart and won't be great team, like won't be a good team. So in this game, I'm going to go with the Newcastle Knights by uh, six points in this game to defeat the Raiders in this match. The next game of this match, which is the Storm going up against the Panthers. Now this game is going to be one of the most hardest games they usually would say, because obviously you would have um, Nick Meany in that side uh, for the Storm. Then you would have Ryan Poppenhausen, Xavier Coates, uh, Cameron Munster, all those ordinary players that didn't really play in the trials. Um, oh, I believe Xavier Coates did, but not Cameron Munster. But then you would have uh, Jerome Hughes also in that side for the team, which I do see the Melbourne Storm having a really good uh, game. But then the Penrith Panthers, Premiership winners, Hard team to beat. Nathan Cleary in that side for the team. And also um, Jerome Luai still. But next year he's going to the West Tigers. So this year will be his last year. But then again, no Stephen Crichton. So that's a big blow for the Panthers. Uh, for the centres. Then you've got Brian To'o um, 
usually he plays in the number five position and uh, Sunia Toffa um, in that number two. But then again, like I would have to say, it might change. The team list hasn't really came out, it only came out for the other two. So it basically has um, been different. I would have thought it being came all at once, but fortunately that didn't happen. So yeah, that's my guess um, for my prediction of the lineup. That's what I'm saying. But it's a matter of how this game can go to plan. Last time I went to the stadium, um, well, last time I went to Penrith Stadium, not, Mar not the Storm Stadium, Storm came out really well, but Panthers got the job done only by a try. So, it's a matter of doing a goodbye class show. I'm going to go with the Panthers on this one. I reckon the Panthers will only just make it in that uh, game, and yeah, I reckon they'll improve by six points to defeat the Melbourne Storm in this game. The next game of this match, we see the Eels going up against the Bulldogs. Now, this game is going to be real tough and hard. I might be going down to um, Bankwest, or Combank, sorry, not Bankwest. It used to be called Bankwest, but now it's Combank. Um, yeah, so I might be going down there. I'm not too sure yet. Um, but in this match, the Bulldogs have got decent amount of players now in that side. The last um, in the trials, it doesn't count. Just because they played uh, the trial games um, doesn't mean that like it will count for the actual um, first grade uh, competition in, the, in basically this side. And for the Eels, um, I went to the fan day um, yeah, with uh, Entertain House. So, yeah, um, it's a 50 to 60% chance that I'll be going. Not sure yet. But anyway, in this side, um, yeah, this game will be a tight one. With Josh Adokar, Stephen Crichton, uh, no Jake Averillo because he's gone to the Dolphins. Uh, now you've got um, Bronson Cherry, he came back from basically a long-term suspension that he had to do with um, yeah, some other thing, but I'm not going to say it, mention it, because it is um, a bit of description um, in the way that I can't really say. But anyway, um, yeah, no Mike Sebo, so I'll be surprised if Sean Russell goes into the number five position, and then uh, you've got the number two, Isaac Lumi Lumi. I'll be surprised if that happens. I'm going to predict it, but it may not happen. I might not be right, may be right, I'm not exactly sure. But in this game, um, yeah, with no Marco Sivo, I just think that the Eels will struggle and tumble a little bit, but it's a matter of how the way they can play. But it's a ri rivalry game, because um, Bulldogs and Eels don't really like each other, they don't really associate well with each other, so it's going to be a very interesting game so in this match I am going to go with the Parramatta Eels by four points in this game to defeat the Bulldogs in this match. The next game of this match we see the Titans going up against the Dragons. Now in this game it's going to be a real tough and hard game. Like I say like every team's a hard team um, but sometimes the Titans can um, be a bit of a hot and cold team but then again they can come out firing they can come out with um, with full energy and full strength team but I would have to say in this game going up against the Dragons it's going to be tough for the Dragons because they're just not a very good team at the moment and yeah still no Cody Ramsey which I do feel so sorry for him because he is a pretty interesting player like uh, Matt Dufty uh, how he used to be and how the way his speed was and energetic and power. Like, I quite like how the way uh, Cody Ramsey played, but, yeah, it was quite interesting and, yeah, quite hard to believe. But, anyway, let's move on from that and let's start with this one. Free fresh and start again. So then again, the Dragons, I reckon they'll improve, but not improve enough as the Titans. The Titans can be a very good side. Um, but in this match, 
with obviously AJ Brimson, I think Jaden Campbell's in that side, but probably in a change or reserve uh, side. But then again, you've got Keno Keeney, um, basically fullback um, position, you see, um, yeah, in that uh, growing half, uh, Tino um, in that side. Um, yeah, I just reckon that the Titans will do well, the Titans will do great, and BKR, this is for you. I am going to go with uh, the Titans by 12 points in this game to defeat the Dragons in this match. And finally, the next game of this match, we see the Dolphins going up against the Cowboys. Now, this game is going to be another tough and hard game. Uh, the Dolphins, they were improving, but it was just tough how the way they can bring out to the side and play really uh, good. Um, with Orica Kafusi in that side, with Herbie Farmworth, um, Jermaine Asako, Jeremy Marshall King, Sean O'Sullivan, a couple of good players in there that can really uh, bring the Dolphins alive. Um, but going up against the Cowboys, look, I'm just going to say this, right? If the Cowboys can play well, but it's just a matter of how the way they can play it. But then going up against the Dolphins, I reckon they'll improve. But that side, the Cowboys can bring some good energy in with like basically Chad Townsend steering the Cowboys around and with Scott Drinkwater in there. Um, basically like Jeremiah Nanai, uh, Kyle Fell, Apparently, uh, no, Cohen Hess he is, I think, out for the season. I'm not 100% sure, uh, but I heard rumours that he is. But correct me if I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, just let me know in the comments down below when I post this video. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, I just reckon that the Cowboys will do well. They are a really good team, so is the Dolphins. But it's a matter of if the Dolphins can play well, but I reckon the Cowboys will improve by 100% to defeat the Dolphins in this game, so I'm going to go with the Cowboys by 6 points in it this match. Anyway guys, that's all from me, make sure you do like and subscribe guys, and I'll see you guys in my next video, previews, and lots more. Take care, and have a good one.